Vivian Lee, Laurence Olivier, Heather Angel, Tom Conway. The Gulf Screen Guild Theater. Your host, the director of the star's own theater, Roger Pryor. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of your neighborhood Good Gulf dealer and the Gulf Oil Companies, welcome to the Gulf Screen Guild Theater. We're making radio history here in the Gulf Theater tonight, ladies and gentlemen, for we bring you Vivian Lee and Lawrence Olivier in Noel Coward's great comedy, Private Lives. They'll be supported by Heather Angel and Tom Conway. This is the first time that Vivian Lee and Lawrence Olivier have appeared together on the air in a full-length play. You ask for them, and so tonight you'll hear them here in the star's own theater. We in Hollywood consider the Gulf Theater our own theater because the money that would ordinarily go to the stars who appear here, Gulf gives instead to the Motion Picture Relief Fund to help care for the workers in the motion picture industry who can no longer provide for themselves. That burst of applause, ladies and gentlemen, is for Vivian Lee and Lawrence Olivier, who have just entered from the wings. And now, Private Lives, with Vivian Lee as Amanda, Lawrence Olivier as Elliot, Heather Angel in the role of Sybil, and Tom Conway as Victor. The house lights dim, and that's the cue for Frank Tours. He gives the downbeat to Oscar Bradley's Gulf Orchestra, and the play begins. gentlemen, this story began about five years ago with a wedding. My wedding to Sybil. That's absurd, Elliot, and you know it. What? It really began with my wedding to Victor. Uh, look, Amanda, will you please not interrupt? Of course I shall interrupt, if you persist in deliberately perverting the truth. It really began with our divorce from each other five years ago, and our subsequent remarriage. I to Victor, and you to Sybil. All right, then. It began with our divorce from each other, followed by your remarriage to Victor and mine to Sybil. I think that clarifies the situation. Dear Victor loved to get up early in the morning, so he insisted we be married at high noon. Do you, Amanda, take this man, Victor, to be your lawful wedded husband, to love, honor, and cherish so long as you both shall live? Amanda, Amanda. Yes, Elliot? I mean, Victor. What is it? The minister. Oh, will I? Yes, I will. Of course I will. Your wedding was very unromantic, I must say. I suppose your wedding to Sybil simply oozed sentiment. As a matter of fact, it was a very charming affair. Will you, Elliot, take this woman, Sybil, to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, honor, and cherish so long as you both shall live? Elliot. Elliot. Hmm? Yes, Amanda. Sybil, I mean. And yes, of course I'll take her. Who wouldn't, after all? Ellie, dear, the clerk was right about the terrace. It's lovely out here. Do come out. Coming. Mmm, not bad, is it? Divine. I'm so glad we came to the Hotel Imperial. Oh, Ellie, I'm so happy. Are you? Aren't you? Of course I am. Tremendously happy. Ellie, are you really glad you married me? Of course. Gladder than when you married Amanda? Yes. I wish I was sure of that, but I'm not. That song, for instance. What song? You know the one I mean. Someday I'll find you. You told me once you couldn't stand that song because it reminded you of her. That's right. Then why do you have it all the time? Pure reflex. Doesn't mean a thing. No? No. She was pretty, wasn't she? Very. Prettier than I am? Much. Elliot. Amanda was pretty and sleek, and her hands were long and slim, and her legs were long and slim. She danced like an angel. You dance very poorly, by the way. Could she play the piano as well as I can? She couldn't play the piano at all. Uh-huh. Had you my talent for organization? No, but you hadn't your mother, either. <laughs> I love you far more than Amanda loved you. 
I'd never make you miserable like she did. We made each other miserable. She lost you with her violent tempers and carryings on. You do hate her, don't you? Uh, look, darling, what's the use of all this? That's over now. It's such a long time ago. Five years isn't very long. Oh, yes, it is. It's forever. Do you think you could ever love her again? Of course not. And once and for all, will you stop talking about her? Yes, Sally. Dear. I don't wish to see her again or hear her name mentioned. Very well, darling. That understood? Yes, darling. Where did you spend your honeymoon with her? San Moritz and stop talking about it. I hate San Moritz. So do I, better then. Was Amanda good on skis? Uh, look, it's late. We'd better go in and dress for dinner. I love you, Elliot. I love you more than she ever did. I'm sure of it. Now let's go in and dress. Kiss me first. Of course. <gasps> oh. What is it? On the next terrace there. Someone's coming out. <laughs> quick, quick, let's go in. <laughs> Amanda. Yes, Victor? Come outside. That clerk was right. The view from this terrace is wonderful, and there's a moon. Coming. Did you order cocktails, Victor? The boy is here with them. Have him bring them out here. I'll bring them myself. Oh, it is perfect. Why, Joe. Uh, I beg your pardon? You, you look wonderful. I thought I'd change into this more comfortable. You look like a beautiful advertisement for something. Nothing peculiar, I hope. I can hardly believe it's true. You and I here alone together, married. You love me, Amanda. Of course. That's why I'm here. More than you did, Elliot? Now then, none of that. No, but do you love me more than you loved Elliot? I really don't remember. It's such a long time ago. Not so very long. All my life ago. I'll never treat you like he did. You can depend on that. I'm sure I can. I love you too much. So did Elliot. Fine sort of love that was. He struck you once, didn't he? More than once. Where? Oh, several places. What a care. <laughs> I struck him too. Once I broke four gramophone records over his head. It was very satisfying. You must have been driven to distraction. Don't let's talk about it anymore, Victor, please. All right. You know, this is a grand place for a honeymoon. By the way, where did you spend the last Victor? one? Victor? I want to know. San Moritz. It was very attractive. I hate San Moritz. So do I. You poor child. I'm going to make you forget all about the ghastly experience you had before. The honeymoon wasn't such a ghastly experience, really. It was afterwards that was so awful. I intend to make you forget it all entirely. Did Elliot start quarreling with you right away? To the devil with Elliot. Amanda! I forbid you to mention his name again. I'm sick of the sound of it. Elliot, Elliot, Elliot. Here we are on the first night of our honeymoon with the moon coming up. And all you can do is to talk about my first husband. It's, it's downright sacrilegious. I'm sorry, Amanda. Please forgive me. Maybe I'd better go and dress for dinner. Maybe you had. I shan't be long. I'll be out here, Sybil. Let me know when you're ready for dinner. All right, Elliot. I won't be long, darling. Oh, good evening. I didn't... Amanda. Good evening, Elliot. What are you doing in this hotel? I'm on my honeymoon. How interesting. So am I. I hope you're enjoying it. We've only just arrived. So have we. Are you happy? Perfectly. Good. That's all right, then, isn't it? Are you? Ecstatically. I'm delighted to hear it. We shall probably meet again sometime. Yes, we probably shall. Au revoir. Goodbye. Leave here tonight? But early, why? Listen, Sybil, I've just had the most extraordinary sensation of impending disaster. You mean an earthquake or something? Uh, yes, yes, several of them, with accompanying explosions and eruptions, violent and terrible. Now, Elliot, that's absurd. There are never earthquakes in this part of the country, and I'll not leave here tonight. I'm tired. You will leave here. I won't. If there's anything that infuriates me, it's sheer wanton stubbornness in a woman. I should like to cut off her head with a meat axe. Oh, Ellie, on our honeymoon night. Don't quibble, Sybil. Oh, <laughs> you're horrible. If this is the way you act as a husband, I don't wonder Amanda left you. I'm going down to dinner. If you don't care to join me, you needn't. But I will not leave this hotel. Ah. But, Victor, you must take me away. After all, you don't want me to be miserable all through my honeymoon, do you? Well, look, Amanda, why on earth didn't you remember before about your sister's tragedy happening here? I got the places muddled. It all came back to me when I saw the courtyard by moonlight. When did all this happen? Years ago, Victor. But it might all have been yesterday. I can see her now, lying there dead, with that dreadful expression on her face. Poor dear Millicent. I never knew you had a sister. I haven't any more. Oh, Victor, we must get away from this awful place now. No. And it's not awful. It's delightful. And I don't believe a word about your sister. You never had a sister, dead or alive. Well, I could have had, Victor. I'm perfectly healthy. 
<laughs> Whatever your reason for wishing to leave here, I can't humor you in it. It's a husband's place to be firm. Oh, is it? Well, it's also a husband's place to... What is it? What? Music. Where is it coming from? Downstairs somewhere, of course. Well, are you coming down to dinner with me or aren't you? No, Victor. Very well, Amanda. I shall be in the bar. When you're ready to come down and dine, let me know. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Amanda. I had an idea you might be leaving. I had an idea you might be too, Elliot. Sir, why should I? Where's your... Victor's dining alone. Oh. Where's yours? Sybil's dining alone, too. Oh. Do you want a cocktail? There are two here. Two over here as well. Let's have my two first. Very well. Ah. Remarkably low walls of this hotel. Oh, remarkable. Hardly a wall at all. <laughs> to honeymoon. Honeymoon. <laughs> of course, you're in love with Victor. Of course. <laughs> funny. I don't see anything funny about it. You love Sybil, don't you? Certainly. There you are, then. There we both are, then. I hope you'll be very happy, Elliot. You too, Amanda. Nasty insistent to the tune, that one. Yes. It's annoying to find how potent cheap music can be. Amanda, what exactly were you, were you remembering at that moment? Really want to know? Yes. San Moritz, the Palace Hotel skating rink early one morning. Bright, strong sunlight and everybody whirling round in vivid colours. And you kneeling down to put on my skates for me. <laughs> You'd fallen on the ice a few minutes before. You were beastly to laugh. <laughs> Poor darling. Do you remember waking up in the morning and standing on the balcony looking out across the valley? Blue shadows on white snow. Cleanness beyond belief. High above everything in the world. How beautiful it was. It's nice to think we had a few marvellous moments. A few? We had heaps, really. Only they slip away in the background. One only remembers the bad ones. What utter fools we were to ruin it all. Why did we? Who knows? We were so ridiculously over in love. To the devil with love. To the devil. We say that. And yet here we are starting afresh with two quite different people in love all over again. Aren't we? No. Elliot. We're not in love all over again, Amanda, and you know it. Darling, stop it. We've got to talk about something else besides ourselves. We've got to. What What have you been doing lately? Well, I went round the world, you know, after... How was it? The world? Very enjoyable. China must be very interesting. Yeah. Very big, China. And Japan? <laughs> very small. And India, the Taj Mahal. You weren't disappointed in the Taj Mahal? Unbelievably beautiful. Sort of dream. That was the moonlight. I expect you must have seen it by moonlight. Darling... I love you so. I hope you met a sacred white elephant. They're lint white, I believe, and very, very sweet. I never loved anyone else for an instant. Elliot, you mustn't see. You love me too, don't you? There's no doubt about it anywhere, is there? No. No doubt anywhere. Amanda, deep down in my deepest heart, I want you back again. Please. Oh, my darling. Oh, Elliot, what now? What are we going to do? Escape. Together? Of course. Now, before it's too late. We can't. It'll break Victor's heart. And Sybil's too, probably. But think how much worse it will be for them if we stayed, loving each other so desperately. Elliot, if we do this thing, we'll suffer for it. I know we shall. Can't help, Amanda. We'll start all those awful rows all over again. Oh, no, darling. We're older now, and why is Only old enough, why? Will you stop shilly shallying? I'm only trying to be sensible. You're only succeeding in being completely idiotic. Elliot, what did I tell you? Here we are, ready at each other's throats. Darling, forgive me. No, I won't move until we have a solemn compact never to quarrel again. It's the bickering that starts it. We've got to invent some phrase or catchword to use whenever we start bickering. When one of us says that, we must stop at once. It's our only hope. Yes, you're right, you're right. What should it be? Uh, 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 Solomon Isaacs. Solomon Isaacs? That'll do. Now, come on. My bag. Oh, forget it, darling. We'll buy clothes later. Look, there's a stairway over there from the terrace right down to the courtyard. We'll take no chances of meeting. Darling, this is terrible, terrible. Amanda. Uh, notes. We should leave notes. We'll telegraph from somewhere. Darling, I can't go. It's too awful. I was I damned. Will you come or must I drag you by the hair of the but head? Elliot. Solomon Isaacs. Oh, darling. Now, let's go. Amanda, Amanda. Oh, good evening. I was looking for my wife. Oh, that's funny. I was looking for my husband. Well, quite a coincidence. <laughs> Lovely night. Lovely. You know, we're on our honeymoon. <laughs> really? So are we. <laughs> Certainly a remarkable coincidence. <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> can't imagine what's happened to Amanda. I can't imagine what's happened to Elliot. What? 
What name did you say? I said... What name did you say? Amanda. And Elliot. Oh. Oh. Elliot! Amanda! Amanda! And on that slightly hysterical note, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to a close Act One of Private Lives. We'll bring you Act Two in just a moment. And that's even more hysterical. Oh, but how do you know? Shh, Roger, I peeked during rehearsal. Oh, you did? Oh, I thought you were busy reading something. Oh, I was. I read all about George Barringer. Ever hear of him? He's the famous racing driver who recently whizzed over the Bonneville salt beds of Utah to establish 33 new Class D speed records. And he made those records with Gulf Pride motor oil in his crankcase and Gulf No Nox gasoline in his gas tank. The exact same Gulf Pride and No Nox that you can get at your neighborhood good Gulf dealer. Gulf Pride motor oil is refined from 100% Pennsylvania crude by the famous Alclor process. Gulf No Nox gasoline has such a high rating that it's knockproof under all normal driving conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, a racing driver like George Barringer really knows the facts about motor oils and gasoline. He's got to. So why not take a tip from him and next time see if you don't get more engine protection and a sweeter running, smoother motor when you use America's record-breaking motor oil and America's record-breaking gasoline, Gulf Pride motor oil, and Gulf No Knox gasoline. Thank you, bud. And now the second act of Private Lives, starring Vivian Lee as Amanda, Lawrence Olivier as Elliot, Heather Angel as Sybil, and Tom Conway as Victor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was something like this. After we ran away from the hotel... You don't mind, I'm telling a story. I don't see why you should. After all, I was there, wasn't I? And there's certainly nothing wrong with my memory. I agree. The fault is with your mind as a whole. What? To continue. Ladies and gentlemen, we went directly from the hotel afterwards to my lodge in the country. It was my lodge. You gave it to me by the terms of the door. We went to a lodge in the country. <laughs> That's better. Thank you very much. We were blissfully happy, you and I and your maiden aunt. Maiden by choice, Elliot. It's not hers, I'll be done. Well, as I was saying, we went to this lodge. You know, Elliot, I'm glad we didn't go out tonight. <laughs> or last night. Or the night before. <sighs> we ought to be absolutely tortured with conscience. You know that, don't you? Oh, we sent Victor and Sybil a nice note from wherever it was. What more than they want? You're even more ruthless than I am. I don't believe in crying over my bridge before I've eaten it. Very sensible. But you know, one or both of them is bound to turn up here eventually. Bound to? Won't it be horrible? Completely and exquisitely. I can hardly wait. I can just see Victor. He will roar and snort like a... Like a whole herd of bison. <laughs> you know, bison <laughs> never sounds right to me somehow. I have a feeling it ought to be bison. A flock of bison. <laughs> you might say a covey of bison, or even a school of bison. Yes, lovely. The Royal London School of Bison. Speaking of bison, have you ever crossed the Sahara on a camel? Frequently. When I was a boy, we used to do it all the time. My grandmother had a lovely seat on a camel. There's no doubt about it. Foreign travel's the thing. Indubitably. Darling. Hmm? Have I told you you're very attractive tonight? Mm hmm. But it bears repeating. Amanda, come here. Thank you, my dear. You know, Elliot, I believe I'd rather be kissed by you than almost any man I know. Almost? Did I say almost? You certainly did. Well... That's what I meant. Now, look here. Solomon Isaacs, darling, remember? <laughs> you know, we've hardly had to use Solomon Isaacs at all. Solomon Isaacs is so long. Let's shorten it to, I know, solace. All right. Hand me my drink, will you? The music? Why not? Are you engaged for this dance, Lady Agatha? Funnily enough, I was. But my partner was suddenly taken ill. Is this cursed smallpox epidemic? You'll dance it with me. I shall be charmed. Tell me, is that the Grand Duchess Olga lying under the grand piano? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Her husband died a few weeks ago, you know, on his way back from Pulborough. What on earth was he doing in Pulborough? Nobody knows exactly, but there have been the usual rumors. I see. Delightful parties Lady Bundle always gives, doesn't she? Entrancing. Such a dear old lady. And so gay. Did you notice her at supper blowing all those shrimps through her ear, ear trumpet? 
darling, the music. Yes. Amanda, my sweets. What fools we were. Those lost years. I know. We were raving mad ever to part, even for an instant. Utter imbecile. My heart broke on that infernal trip round the world. I saw such beautiful things, darling. Moonlight shining on old temples, strange barbaric dances in jungle villages. Flamingos flying over deep, deep blue water. Breathlessly lovely and somehow completely unexciting because you weren't there to see them with me. Take me, please. Let's make up for lost time. Next week? Tomorrow. Yeah. I must see those dear flamingos. Oh, darling, I love you so. Angel. Angel. No, Eddie. Hey, stop now. Darling. Why should I stop? No, you're dropping, Kate. I know, but it's too soon after dinner. <laughs> You really do say the most awful things sometimes. Well, it is much too soon. That remark shows rather a common sort of mind, I'm afraid. Oh, it does, does it? No. You simply don't realize that there are certain times when our cosmic thingamajigs don't fuse properly. Cosmic thingamajigs, indeed. Please try to be more explicit. You know perfectly well what I mean. Don't try to patronize me. You're tight. That's what's wrong with you. Tight? I've had three small liqueur glasses of brandy all the evening. A child of two couldn't get tight on that. On the contrary, a child of two would get roaring drunk on only one glass of brandy. Very interesting, dear. Very interesting. How about a child of four and a child of six and a child of nine? We might get up a splendid little debate about that. Intemperate top. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut up! There you go. Snap, snap, snap like a little adder. Adders don't snap. They sing. Nonsense. They have a little bag of venom behind their fangs and they snap. They sing. Snap, snap! I don't care, do you understand? I don't care if they bark and roll about like hoops. Now, Amanda, you listen to me. I will not see you. I want to peace. Peace and quiet. <sighs> You're going to listen to me. I am not. Amanda, put, put down that record. I won't. Put it down, I say. Stay away from me. Put that record down. All right, I will. There. Ow! <laughs> very pretty. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, you struck me. Why not? You broke a record over my head. You struck me. Of course I did. Certain women should be struck regularly like gongs. <laughs> you, you, I hate you. I loathe you. I despise you. Amanda, don't throw that bar at me. It took ten years to find it. Darling, don't. You took twice that long to find the pieces. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, stop it. Yourself. Your aim used to be better. <laughs> Very pretty, actually. Stop laughing, you. Stop it. Stop it. Really, it's stop it. This is the end, Elliot. You understand? The end. Finally and forever. I'm leaving. No. Oh, no, you're not. I, let go. You're a cruel fiend. But I know you. Thank heaven. I never realized in time what you're really like. Marry you again. Never. 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 I'd rather die in I wouldn't marry you if you came to me and just bended me. You're a mean, nasty, tiny little fat bar. I'd never lay eyes on you again. Oh, will you let go of me? The matter. Look out. That land for you beast! You spine! You sit me! I sit you! You sit me! Ruth! Cat! Ow! Why, beast! Ow! Ow! Oh, hello, Sybil. Amanda! <laughs> oh, hello, Victor. On the floor, brawling. Oh, don't find us. Do sit down if you can find a chair. Oh! Oh! Oh, you devil, you cruel. She's a I'm going to your your body. I would have Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story. What did you say, Ellie? I said that was the story, Amanda. Oh, is it? And I suppose you'll just leave it there. What, pray, do you intend to do about Sybil and Victor? Oh, <laughs> Victor. <laughs> you needn't say, oh, Victor, like that. As I remember, he rose to the occasion very nobly. Much better than your wishy-washy Sybil did, by the way. That's a lie. Victor was a boor. He was magnificent. A boor. I can see him now, standing there, his shoulders squared, facing you, his coat off. Yes, he had on a green check tie and horrible taste. Never mind his tie. His jaw stuck out, his voice commanding, you literally quavering before him. <laughs> You're going to apologize to my wife, Mr. Elliot Chase, for everything you've said to her. Now, let's hear it. All right. Victor, your wife is a slattern and a fishwife. What's that? She's also a rampaging gas bag and a ravening leopard. Oh. Shall I go on? Put up your hand. Go on, Elliot. Put up your hand. Yes, Elliot, put up your hand. Or do you only fight with four defenseless women? Defenseless? You, my dear Amanda, are about as defenseless as a nursing saber-toothed tiger. Elliot's right. This is all your fault, Amanda. You... You despoiler of honeymoon. Ah, oh, listen to that. There's just one thing I want to know, Amanda. Yes, Victor? Do you love Elliot? I despise him. Thank you. Keep out of this, Elliot. I'm talking to my wife. Do you want to marry him again, Amanda? I'd sooner be married to a ring-tailed monkey. Oh, come now, Amanda. Victor isn't quite as bad as that. Shut up, you... <laughs> Shut up yourself. I'm tired of your blustering, my little man. Another word out of you and I'll forget myself. Lucky you. I've been trying to do that for years. And as for you, yes? goodbye. You're leaving, Elliot. How nice. For where? For, for Siberia. 
Northern Siberia. But, Elliot... Yes, Sybil? I don't want to go to Siberia. Nobody asked I won't go. Nobody asked you. Oh, oh so you're deserting her. You care. Suppose he is. I'm his wife. He's got a right to desert me if he wants to. Bravo. Sybil, don't talk like a fool. Victor Prince, how dare you speak to me like that? Because you've been irritating me for days. Oh! You're one of the most completely idiotic women I've ever met. And you're certainly the rudest man I've ever met. Well, you obviously haven't met many men. Uh, Elliot. Yes. No, otherwise you'd never have come met Come on you. outside for a moment. All right. Well, Amanda? That train to Siberia. Is it a big train? Tremendous. Could it carry one more passenger? <laughs> Darling, let's go quickly. A bag. Always worrying about bags. Darling, what about them, Victor and Sybil? Didn't you hear? They were made for each other. Oh, you're right. Come, darling, quickly. Siberia, dear Siberia, is waiting. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story. And I must say, I told it very well. You told it? You added a few meager, unimportant details, and even those were very sketchy, man. They weren't. What about the marriage? Who's married? Victor's and Sybil. Completely unimportant, Elliot. Not to them it wasn't. What about that child? Details, details, always details. The unfailing sign of a small mind. That child is hardly a detail. And my mind is anything but small. It's minute, microscopic. It's infinitesimal. Look, my dear, do you suppose you'll be quiet for a moment? I won't be quiet. All right, then yell! Scream! Roar like the bench! Hey, 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 you two. What? Salak's, remember? Oh, Elliot. He's right. Amanda. Amanda, my darling. Salak. And double Salak. Vivian Lee, Lawrence Olivier, Heather Angel, and Tom Conway. And thank you, True Boardman, for your grand radio adaptation of Noel Coward's play. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, next week, the Gulf Theater stars Claudette Colbert, Basil Rathbone, Ernst Lubitsch, Frank Tours conducting Oscar Bradley's Gulf Orchestra, and Jack Benny. Until then, this is Roger Pryor saying good night, everybody, for your neighborhood good golf field. Instantly appears through the courtesy of David O. Selznick, and she may be seen at Gone with the Wind, which will soon be generally released. Miss Lee and Mr. Olivier are now engaged in the making of Alexander Gordon's production, Lady Hamilton. Tom Conway appears through the courtesy of MGM. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.